1444 chamber were once the closest advisers and confidants to Augustus Giovanni and the beating black heart of the clan of death's necromantic might. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It's the chamber that leads the clan these nights, not Augustus. Many of his old loyalists met final death to make way for new members rising through the ranks, or brought in from the cold with the clan's formerly disparate splinters. But the 1444 chamber is still the center of power and influence, even if some of the faces of its members have changed. You're an agent of the chamber's will, somewhere directly on the operations flowchart that cascades down from the so-called board of directors. Maybe your sire sits on the chamber. Maybe you backed one of the up-and-coming bosses in the uprising against their complacent superiors. Maybe you've just got the talent that the board looks for in the new age of unity within the clan. Someone up there has invested trust and responsibility in you. Don't disappoint them. Greetings, kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, and welcome back to Our World of Darkness and another episode of Metaplot Monday, where we are going to be taking a break from the lore sheets that we have been working on. Don't worry, we're still doing a lore sheet, uh, but we are going to be doing the lore sheets that are located in the Forbidden Religions book for the time being. That's six lore sheets that we will be covering before we go back to the Anarch Guide, the Anarch uh, book. Forbidden Religions is such a very interesting book. Just if you have not seen it, I did a full review on it uh, in the last video, and it was just, uh, it was inspiring. Uh, they have alternate convictions in this book, which really do, in my opinion, place your character on what I would consider a path of enlightenment. And uh, maybe I'm still f futzing around with uh, how I plan on handling the concept of touchstones and personal tenets and things like that, but... These are, in fact, cults who have warped your perception into seeing different things. Now, I don't want to go too far into that because that's not what this video is about. This video specifically is about the 1444 Chamber. And the 1444 Chamber is Augustus Giovanni's old uh, board of directors for running the clan. And now that Augustus is gone, it really has changed. There's various members of different the bloodlines from the Hikata who sit on the board now. They still do run things. I find it surprising that they still use the name for the 1444 Chamber due to the fact that that is a direct reference to the Conspiracy of Isaac, which was one of the turning points of Kindred history. The Conspiracy of Isaac was a coterie of Kindred who got together with the explicit directive of destroying Cappadocius and uh, basically removing the Cappadocians from the seat of power of the Clan of Death and putting the Giovanni where they were sitting until recently. So let's go ahead and jump in and see exactly what being involved with the Chamber of 1444 has to offer. Investing one trait into this lore sheet gets you Shadow of the Chamber. Other Hikata know that at least one member of the Chamber trusts you to carry out their will and no one wants to cross one of the ancient monsters who sits at the heart of the Clan of Death's web. You have the equivalent of two additional dots of status within the Hekata clan, but only for the purpose of forcing compliance or intimidating other Hekata. So you're actually a known agent of the chamber. So this is not a complete and utter hidden secret even from the Hikata, the fact that this chamber exists. Shadow of the Chamber seems to just give you the ability to hold your status of being one of the agents of the Chamber over other Hikata. Now we already know that the Hikata is not the big happy family that they claim to be. There is still back stabbing and other things like that. So being a member of the uh, Chamber's enforcement squad, we'll just put it that way, uh, might very well come in handy if you're running in like a, a full Hikata game or there's at least multiple Hikata in a game that you can uh, PC or PC or SPC that you could be able to lord this power over. Investing two traits into this lore sheet gets you mercenary work. When outsiders need the clan of death's expertise, you're a go-between 
trusted to pursue the Chamber's agenda. Once per story, you can arrange the mercenary services of your fellow Hikata for a vampire who is not part of your coterie or clan. Calling up to three dots in any appropriate background that represents the mercenary's talents. Mercenary work is actually kind of interesting because it's one of those things where it seems that you are more along the lines of able to get a hold of an NPC instead of being able to do things yourself. And that is something that uh, seems at first when you read it like a cop-out, but when you stop and think about it, it really does make you of a higher importance than the person who's actually doing things. You are not being the assassin or the bodyguard or the uh, the chauffeur or whatever you want to call it. You are not doing that. You're their boss. And I think that is something that um, when you're running a game that's more intrigue than combat, you might want to think of as a boon rather than a bane. Investing three traits into this lore sheet gets you gilded promises. If there's one thing the Hikata aren't short of, it's money. If you satisfy the chamber with your performance, you have access to four dots of resources. The Clan of Death has little patience for talented students who fail to live up to their promise, though. Disappoint your patron, and you lose these dots until you make things right. I'm pretty sure, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is the first advantage I've ever seen in any Vampire the Masquerade system that shows that you have an income that is actually fully explained. <laughs> the fact that you get four dots and resources due to the fact that you're doing a good job and the fact that your pay can be docked if you do a bad job is kind of interesting. I do like the fact that the Giovanni are paying their agents for this. Or I should I should actually say I'm, I'm very amused that the Hikata are, are paying their agents. Um, because when I've sent my players off on on missions of some kind, I've always felt weird um, giving them money as a payment uh, for doing those things, um, except for when I play Hikata. I do tend to feel a little bit more comfortable with the idea of here's an exorbitant amount of, of funds uh, when it comes to dealing with the Hikata. Investing four traits into this lore sheet gets you Deathly Slave. Never forget that the Chamber compromised the most powerful concentration of vampiric necromancers in existence. Once per story, you can request the service of a specter or another form of wraith naming a specific task, unless it contravenes your patron's agenda. They will compel a single such ghost to perform that service for you. So a high-powered wraith retainer of some form. That's pretty interesting. Due to the fact that there are various forms of using wraith in V5, such as having a wraith that rides uh, another body or is able to take over a kindred or being able to get into certain areas. And if you are a fan of wraith and know how the Arkanoi, the specific powers or disciplines of a wraith work, there are very interesting things that you could really do if you are putting that much effort into it. The ability to use the various denizens of Oblivion itself to achieve some task that you need to do is, uh, is a benefit, very much. And uh, I would definitely make sure that if a character does have a Wraith Retainer, that these Wraiths are going to be a lot more specialized and a lot more capable than anything the player actually has access to. Investing five traits into this lore sheet gets you Anziani Patron. You directly serve one of the Anziani, and you know that they are on the board of directors, making you one of the trusted few they confide in. As their agent in the outside world, you can't rely on their direct influence to help you on a night-by-night -night basis, but when the chamber wills it, the whole clan of death moves as one. Once per chronicle, you can call upon your patron to push the 1444 chamber into action and call all loyal Hikata in the region to your aid, regardless of their other priorities. As long as it does not contravene the agenda of your patron or the chamber, the chamber will expect you 
to repay this debt to them. Anziani are some of the most high regarded necromancers in the world. They are the inner council of the inner council. And the fact that you know an Anziani and they're willing to help you in something that you're trying to do to the point where they will actually point the entire chamber and therefore the entire loyal necromantic population of kindred in the world of darkness to go towards one direction is off the walls insane you are going to owe a life boon this is a big thing but it also means that you're most likely going to get whatever you're trying to get accomplished accomplished so given the fact that the promise of 1528 is going to be over in at the time of recording this six years this kind of thing might very well come in handy I would hold on to this even if I had no intention on using it. If you're playing a Hikata and you have no idea what to put towards lore sheet, if you are not inclined on taking any other lore sheet at all, I would definitely just find a way to invest the five points in this because this is something that would definitely protect you in a game-changing event. You will definitely be able to accomplish pretty much anything you want, but this is a once Per chronicle thing and you will always be paying this back that is not even that's not even a, 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 that's not me overreacting to this this is a huge thing the Anziani are a massive important group just to let you know exactly what I'm talking about and who the Anziani are because they're not really something that comes up very often uh, in Italian it literally means elderly people or el or the elderly um, but the Anziani Council, and I am reading, I'm reading this, so if my eyes direct over, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> uh, the Anziani Council convenes their affairs at the mausoleum in Venice. Formerly, the Anziani had supervised the Giovanni on a global scale. Furthermore, they assisted Augustus Giovanni in his pursuits, should he have awakened from torpor. Although the, all Anziani shared the goal of the Endless Night, as all elders who dared to question this goal were usually killed when Augustus rose from his slumber, many thought that they should not act hastily and take their time to achieve their goal. The Anziani had two divisions. The Anziani Prudente, uh, focused on obtaining wraiths for the Endless Night, and the Anziani Apaciante focused on encouraging violence and war in order to kill many mortals with unfinished business so that the wraiths could be enslaved. So we have a group of Anziani who specifically focus on making sure humans get killed without being able to finish their worldly purpose and those who are set aside to necromantically enslave those freshly killed dead. After the death of Augustus Giovanni, the newly diversified Anziani Council took up the reins as the de jure authority of the nascent clan Hikata. Foremost among their number are the elite group known as the 1444 Chamber, composed of the Capuchin and the late Augustus's most trusted advisors. So as you can see, this is seriously the Council of the Council. If you are looking at it in comparison to typical Vampire the Masquerade politics, like such as the Camarilla, the Anziani would literally be the Justicar Council, and the Inner Council, that nobody knows who they are, would be the 1444 Chamber. So that is what i've got to say about this i think this is a very interesting and in-depth lore sheet i think that they did a lot of uh, great work putting this kind of thing together they uh they really did do they did justice uh to the hikata's inner workings because this is one of those things where you could say it's just running in the background and if a player chose to take anything from this it shows how interested they would be as player characters to be involved in higher political maneuvering when it comes to vampire the masquerade especially on something on the outskirts such as the hikata i am voivode maquette this is our world of darkness and we have just taken a look 
at the 1444 Chamber for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, which is a lore sheet located in the Forbidden Religions book. Good evening.